lie then listen, gentlemen, that's come of high-born blood. I'll tell you of a brave booting that befell Robin Hood. Robin Hood, upon a day, he went forth him alone. And as he came from Barnsdale into a fair evening, he met a beggar on the way that steadily he could gang. He had a pike staff in his hand, was both stark and strang. A clouded cloak about him was that held him from the cold. The thinnest bit of it, I guess, was more than twentyfold. His meal pot hung about his neck into a leathern fang, well fastened with a broad buckle that was both stark and strang. He had three hats upon his head, together stick and fast. He cared neither for wind nor wet in lands wherever he passed. Good Robin coosed him in his way to see what he might be. If any beggar had money, he thought some part had he. Tarry, tarry, good Robin says, tarry and speak with me. He heard him as he heard him not, fast his way can he. It bees not so, says good Robin, nay, thou must tarry still. By my troth, says the bold beggar, of that I have no will. It is far to my lodging house, and it is growing late. If they have supped ere I come in, I will look wondrous blate. Now by my troth, says good Robin, I see well by thy fare. Thou cheer well to thy supper, of mine thou takes no care. Who wants my dinner all the day, and wots not where to lie? And should I to the tavern go, I want money to buy. Sir, thou must lend me some money to we to meet again. The beggar answered cankeredly, I have no money to lend. Thou art as young a man as I, and seems to be as swear. If thou fast till thou get from me, thou shalt not eat this year. Now by my troth, says good Robin, since we are assembled so, if thou have but a small farthing, I'll have it ere thou go. Therefore lay down thy clouted cloak, and do no longer stand, and loose the strings of all thy pox, I'll write them with my hand. Now to thee I make a vow, if thou make any din, I shall see if a broad arrow can pierce a beggar's skin. The beggar smiled and answer made, Far better let me be. Think not that I will be afraid for thy nip crooked tree, or that I fear thee any wit for thy curnips nips of sticks. I know no use for them so meters to be pudding pricks. Here I defy thee to do me ill, for all thy boisterous fare. Thou shalt get nothing from me but ill, would thou seek it ever mere. Good Robin bent his noble bow, he was an angry man, and in it set a broad arrow, yet ere twas drawn a span, the beggar with his noble tree reached him so round a rout, that his bow and his broad arrow in flinders flew about. Good Robin bound him to his brand, but that proved likewise vain. The beggar lighted on his hand with his pike staff again. I wot he might not draw a sword for forty days and more. Good Robin could not speak a word, his heart was never so sore. He could not fight, he could not flee, he wist not what to do. The beggar with his noble tree laid lusty flaps him too. He paid good Robin back and side, and beft him up and down, and with his pike staff still on laid, till he fell in a swoun. If I stand up, man, the beggar said, tis shame to go to rest. Stay still till thou get thy money told, I think it were the best. And sign go to the tavern house, and buy both wine and ale. Here at thy friends will crack full kraus, thou hast been at a dale. Good Robin answered never a word, but lay still as a stain. His cheeks were white as any clay, and closed were his eyes. The beggar thought him dead but fail, and boldly bound away. I would you had been at the dale, and gotten part of a play. Now three of Robin's men by chance came walking on the way, and found their master in a trance on ground where he did lay. Up have they taken good Robin, 
making a piteous beer, yet saw they no man there at whom they might the matter spear. They look at him all round about, but wounds on him saw none, yet at his mouth came bocking out the blood of a good vein. Cold water they have taken sign and cast into his face. Then he began to lift his eye and spake within short space. Tell us, dear master, says his men, how with you stands the case. Good Robin sighed ere he began to tell of his disgrace. I have been watchman in this wood near hand this forty year, yet I was never so hard bestead as you have found me here. A beggar wear the clouted cloak, in whom I feared no ill, hath with a pike staff clawed my back, I fear it shall never be well. See where he goes, out or yon hill, with hat upon his head. If ever you loved your master well, go now, revenge this deed, and bring him back again to me, if it lie in your might, that I may see before I die him punished in my sight. And if you may not bring him back, let him not go loose on, for to us all it were great shame if he escaped again. One of us shall with you remain, because you're ill at ease. The other two shall bring him back, to use him as you please. Now by my troth, says good Robin, I trow there's enough said. If he gets scouth to wield his tree, I fear you'll both be paid. Be ye not feared, our good master, that we two can be done, with any blutter base beggar that hath naught but a run. Staff shall stand him in no stead, that you shall shortly see. But back again he shall be led, and fast bound shall he be, to see if you will have him slain or hanged on a tree. But cast you slyly in his way before he be aware, and on his pike staff first lay hands, you'll speed the better far. Now leave we Robin with his man, again to play the child, and learn himself to stand and gang by holds for all his isle. Now pass we to the bold beggar that raked o'er the hill, who never mended his pace no more, nor he had done no ill. The young men knew the country well, so soon where he would be, and they have taken another way, was nearer by miles three. They rudely ran with all their might, spared neither dub nor mire. They stirred neither at lake nor height, no travel made them tire. Till they before the beggar won, and coosed them in his way. A little wood lay in a glen, and there they both did stay. They stood up closely by a tree, in the side of the gate. Until the beggar came them to, that thought not of such fate. And as he was betwixt them past, they leapt upon him bathe. The one his pike staff gripped fast, they feared for its scathe. The other he held in his sight, a drawn dirk to his breast, and said, False Carl, quit thy staff, or I shall be thy priest. His pike staff they have taken him fray, and stuck it in the green. He was full lathe to let it gay, it better might have been. Beggar was the fearedest man of one that ever might be. To win away, no way he can, nor help him with his tree. He wist not wherefore he was tamed, nor how many was there. He thought his life days had been gone, and grew into despair. Grant me my life, the beggar said, for him that died on tree. And take away that ugly knife, or then for fear I'll dee. Grieved you never in all my life, by late nor yet by air. Ye have great sin if ye should slay a silly poor beggar. Thou lies, false lou, they said again, by all that may be sworn. Thou hast near slain the gentlest man that ever yet was born. And back again thou shalt be led, fast bound shalt thou be, to see if he will have thee slain, or hanged on a tree. The beggar then thought all was wrong, they were set for his rack. He saw nothing appearing then but ill upon worse back. 
were he out of their hands, he thought, and again at his tree. He should not be had back for naught with such as he did see. Then he bethought him on a while if it could take effect, how he the young men might beguile and give them a begeck. Thus for to do them shame or ill, his beastly breast was bent. He found the wind grew something shrill to further his intent. He said, brave gentlemen, be good and let the poor man be. When ye have taken a beggar's blood, it helps you not a flea. It was but in my own defence, if he had gotten scathe, that I will make a recompense much better for you faith. If ye will set me safe and free, and do me no danger, an hundred pounds I will you give, and much more good silver, that I have gathered these many years under this clouted cloak, and hid up wonder privately in bottom of my poke. Young men to a council yeed, and let the beggar gay. They wist how well he had no speed for them to run away. They thought they would the money take, come after what so may, and then they would not bring him back, but in that part him slay. By that good Robin would not know that they had gotten coin, it would content him for to show that there they had him slain. They said false Carl soon have done, and tell forth that money, for the ill turn thou hast done, tis but a simple fee. And yet we will not have thee back, come after what so may, if thou wilt do that which thou spake, and make us present pay. Oh, then he loosed his clouded cloak, and spread it on the ground, and thereon laid he many a poke betwixt them and the wind. He took a great bag from his haste, it was near full of meal. Two pecks in it at least there was, and more I wot full well. Upon his cloak he laid it down, the mouth he opened wide. To turn the same he made him bound, the young men ready spied. In every hand he took a look of that great leather meal, and with a fling the meal he shook into their faces hail. Wherewith he blinded them so close, a stime they could not see. And then in heart he did rejoice, and clapped his lusty tree. He thought if he had done them wrong in mealing off their clothes, for to strike off the meal again, with his pike staff he goes. Or any one of them could red their eye, or yet a glimmering could see. Ill gain of them a dozen had well laid on with the tree. The young men were right swift of foot, and boldly ran away. The beggar could them no more hit for all the haste he made. What ails is haste, the beggar said, may ye not tarry still, until your money be received, I'll pay you with good will. The shaking of my pokes, I fear, hath blown into your eyn, but I have a good pike staff here, will write them out full clean. The young man answered ne'er a word, they were dumb as a stain, in the thick wood the beggar fled, ere they write their eyne. And sign the night became so late, to seek him was but vain, but judge ye if they look at blight when they came home again. But Robin speared how they had spent, they answered him full ill. That cannot be, good Robin says, ye have been at the mill. The mill it is a meatriff place, they may lick what they please, most like ye have been at that art, would look to your clothes. They hanged their heads and dropped it down, a word they could not speak. Robin said, because I fell a swoon, I think you'll do the like. Tell on the matter less and more, and tell me what and how. Ye have done with the bold beggar I sent you for right now. And then they told him to an end, as I have said before, how that the beggar did them blind, what misters process more. And how he lined their shoulders broad with his great trenchant tree, and how in the thick wood he fled, ere they a stime could see. And how they scarcely could win home, their bones were beft so sore, good Robin cried, fie out for shame, we're shamed for evermore. Though good Robin would full fain of his wrong revenged be, he smiled to see his merry young men had gotten a taste of the tree.